Grandia was an underdog in the world of JRPGs. It was first released in Japan in 1997 for the Sega Saturn, a console mostly known for its sports games and arcade ports. Unfortunately, the Sega Saturn was deep into its end of life cycle with support for the machine being dropped in 1998. Grandia managed to clutch its way to a Sony PlayStation re-release a year later on yet another console that was nearing its end of life cycle. Grandia also received a release for the PAL region shortly thereafter, but not without somehow getting tainted by a company like Ubisoft who plastered their branding all over it. The original Grandia was enough of a success to receive a few more entries spanning consoles like the Sega Dreamcast, PlayStation 2, and Game Boy Color, and even received an MMORPG on PC. Despite these entries, Grandia never reached mainstream success, but still to this day has a cult following. It's important to remember that Grandia was definitely a product of its time. Developing for the Sega Saturn was no easy task with its 17 different processors and flux capacitors. While fighting it out on the Saturn, Grandia had to compete with titles like the Lunar Series and Shining Force. Then when it was ported to the PlayStation, it had to compete with juggernauts like the Final Fantasy series and first-party JRPGs like Ark the Lad and Legend of Dragoon, as well as all the other groundbreaking releases on the console. Grandia is the story about a young kid named Justin who's always wanted to grow up to be an adventurer like his dad. One day, Justin and his childhood friend Sue are exploring some ruins near their hometown when they make contact with a mysterious apparition telling them to head east to the land of Alent in order to unravel the mystery of the Angelo. The two board a ship shortly thereafter and explore far away distant lands. On their adventures, they get into plenty of mischief, as well as somehow manage to save the world in the process. Grandia features a vibrant and lovable cast of characters, plenty of comic relief, as well as a knockout soundtrack. As far as graphics go, Grandia is pretty easy on the eyes. Visuals are highly reminiscent of Xenogears, using expertly crafted 2D sprites over 3D backgrounds. Cutscenes, although few and far between, are rendered as hand-drawn Japanese anime, with occasional 3D FMVs closer to what you might expect from Squaresoft titles at the time. There are a few issues with in-game graphics such as certain assets that are actually two-dimensional sprites being used in a three-dimensional way, like bushes or trees. You can almost make them disappear depending on how you rotate the game's camera angle. Towns in Grandia are gorgeous and full of life. The interior of buildings are some of the most detailed that I have ever seen in a JRPG. You can interact with almost everything inside each building as well. You can knock over books, open up people's stoves, knock pottery over, dishes can go flying. You can interact with just about everything. There's even accompanying sound effects. Grandia's combat system is by far one of its greatest features. The game is turn-based, although at times it feels more like an action RPG. Characters and enemies are not confined to standing in a line facing each other. Both characters and enemies' locations in the battlefield can change. This affects the time it takes to pull off an attack, as well as altering the usefulness of area of effect spells. There are also a few instances during boss fights in which a boss will use a ranged attack that focuses on one section of the field, typically the middle. Players can take advantage of this and spread their characters out and avoid the boss's attacks altogether. Another unique feature is the ability to push back an enemy's turn by pulling off a critical hit. This is a feature that has limited uses in my opinion until a fight gets down to the nitty gritty and your party is out of healing items or mana for spellcasting. Grandia also contains a very crude version of the Gambit system from Final Fantasy XII. You can actually set the party to auto if you want and drop them off in harm's way and sit back, relax, and let the game itself do the grinding. Speaking of grinding, the leveling system in Grandia is a little bit odd. There are character levels, weapon levels, as well as magic levels. Weapon levels are gained through using a particular class of weapon, much like Final Fantasy 1 and 2. Magic levels are a little different. First, you must find what's called a mana egg, then take it to a shop and purchase a spell with it. There are only four types of spells in Grandia, water, fire, earth, and wind. Once you've done this, you have to use the spells over and over to level them up, just like you do your weapons. If two spells reach a specific level, they unlock a new element of spell, like thunder or ice, which requires an absurd amount of grinding. Characters can also obtain and learn skills, which are weapon-based special attacks. These skills are unlocked by leveling up your effectiveness with each weapon class. Some skills, however, require the player to level up certain spells also. This allows the player to use powerful elemental-based weapon skills. 
Characters level very slowly in Grandia, similar to Legend of Dragoon. A casual playthrough will easily result in you being level 35 to 40 with only a few mastered spells by the end of the game. Which isn't too big of an issue. Most encounters can be dispatched with ease, but unlike the majority of JRPGs, Grandia's final boss is a legitimate fight. It's not a story-driven cutscene of a battle, so be ready to give it a few attempts. Dungeons are where Grandia begins to fall short. Most dungeons have little to no detail and all the environments tend to feel the same after a while. Due to this, Grandia could have greatly benefited from some type of in-game map system. You do get a compass, but it's relatively broken and has limited usefulness. It only tells the player which way is north, which is irrelevant unless you just so happen to be in a dungeon that exits to the north. While most RPGs don't offer the player any sort of map, they do however use landmarks, text boxes, and events to guide the player to their destination. Grandia, however, does not. Which is frustrating because there's just way too many dead ends that make it too easy to get lost while exploring these dungeons. It's always fun spending 20 minutes in a dungeon only to accidentally end up back at the beginning because every tree, corridor, and rock looks the same. There are even certain dungeons that have false walls that only disappear when a player examines them. These don't just lead to loot either, sometimes they lead to the actual end of the dungeon. And there's absolutely zero mention of this mechanic and they look exactly the same as every other wall. You just have to be stuck on a dungeon and get so frustrated that you start tapping X on every single surface imaginable. Overall, the pacing of the game is rather slow, repetitive, and predictable. For the entire duration of Grandia, you hop from town to dungeon to town, over and over up until the end of the game. Sometimes you'll visit a town, followed by two dungeons, which really puts you on the edge of your seat. Every time you get to a new town, there's some kind of problem that Justin volunteers everyone to help fix. Once that's done, it's back to town, dungeon, town, dungeon, stopping at each town on the way to fix their problems. While this concept is a staple for the JRPG genre, Grandia just doesn't do much to hide it from the player. There's also almost zero character development in Grandia until the very end of the game, when everyone gets mad at Justin and he's all alone, getting rained on in a field. But moments later, you're at the end of the game. While the characters in Grandia are generally interesting and lovable folks, most don't have any real backstory, which falls flat in my eyes because JRPGs are all about story. Towns are beautiful and full of detail, like I said. However, they're a nightmare to navigate. Sometimes you can get stuck in a town for 15 minutes trying to figure out which building contains the person that you need to talk to in order to progress the story. Really what I mean is, is once you've already found that person, if you have to go back and find them a second time, Good luck, it's going to be a lot harder than what you would think. Do you remember how I mentioned before about how you could interact with so many random objects inside the homes of NPCs in Grandia? Well, aside from going in and wrecking the place, there isn't any real reason to explore any of these places. Most JRPGs will give you useless items, or a few gold, or even a possible side quest for barging in, uninvited, into the homes of innocent non-player characters. Not in Grandia, most of these NPCs' homes are just for show with no real purpose. The game also lacks any sort of explorable world map. Instead, you get an actual paper map and select locations from it to visit. While there are a number of JRPGs that don't feature an explorable world map, I personally enjoy that mechanic and I was disappointed that Grandia didn't offer one. Grandia also doesn't let you go back and visit previous locations, at least not past a certain point. While it doesn't appear that there would be any need to do so, I just found it rather odd that the game wouldn't allow it. You also never get any kind of airship in Grandia. Not that that's really a problem on account of the fact that there's no explorable world map. The game does thankfully let you leapfrog over the dungeons that separate each town. I know I've listed a fair share of gripes regarding Grandia, but it's not inherently a bad game by any means. It's a lighthearted, goofy adventure that's linear in design with a fun cast of characters, and has top-of-the-line sprite work. The game's soundtrack is also one of the best I've ever heard in a JRPG. Grandia's combat system is also one of the few combat systems that never seems to get old. While the plot's kinda lean and straightforward, not every JRPG has to have a highly complex storyline like Xenogears or Final Fantasy XII. Grandia is a great way to cleanse the palate of a seasoned JRPG veteran, and it also would be a great starting point to someone new to the genre. The writers did a great job in making a nonsensical, fun-loving JRPG, and Grandia is one of few that has this sort of tone. For me, it was a fairly refreshing experience. While Grandia innovates in several ways, some of these innovations are overshadowed by a weak mid-game and a lack of gripping story content. Nevertheless, if you're looking for something that can be easily digested with plenty of throwbacks to 90s shonen anime, this might just be your game. My name is StuTube, and this is Grandia.
Ah, uh, he's almost dead. Resistance is futile. <laughs> oh my god. Dude, dude. That straight up sounds like someone taking a really loose fucking sloppy shit. <laughs> oh my god. Holy shit. <laughs> <laughs> 